A very warm welcome to our online service at Rothley Parish Church this morning. Whether you're someone that is part of our regular congregation from wider in the community or joining us from afar, it's great that you can be with us to praise the Lord our God today. During this whole period since the virus began and we've been having services um, often filmed from my back garden, it's great to be back in church and to welcome you to this building where Christians have worshipped for many, many years. Today is the third Sunday in Advent, and during this time of Advent, we've been thinking about not just Christmas, but also looking forwards to our Lord's return in glory. St Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present, but also in the one to come. And so as we look forward to our Lord's return from there, we sing together, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let's sing this together.
Well, we're now on our third Sunday of Advent, and so I'm joined today by Penny, by Miles, and by Connie to help me to light the Advent calendar. And this is the third Sunday of Advent, so how many candles do you think we're going to light today? Three. Three, that's right. Okay, now do you want to hold that carefully first, Penny? And if you like the one you did last week, and then we'll pass it on to Miles, and then, then on to Connie. There we go. That's right. And Miles. That's right. Oh, is it going to go out again? This one does it. There we go. Now, let me hold it. Connie, do you want to come around this side? That's right. Come around this side, please. That's right. Hold that carefully and light this one here. Oh. Hold it against it. There we go. Do you want to blow that out carefully? Well done. Okay. If you want to stand with Miles and Penny. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say a prayer to remind us this week that, um, that God sent messengers in the prophets to promise that Jesus was going to come, especially remember John the Baptist. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you. Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight, for you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, that lighting of the candle and that uh, prayer for this week is a reminder of John the Baptist coming to prepare the way for our Lord Jesus Christ. At Jesus' first coming, John the Baptist came, preaching a baptism of repentance of sins. The scriptures tell us, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. So let's now turn to a time of prayer in which we recognise that we haven't always uh, been preparing for the Lord and that we need to hear that message um, of repentance from sins that we might be ready for our Lord Jesus when he comes. Let's pray. Lord, we have not used your gifts wisely. Forgive us for being unprofitable. In your mercy, hear us and help us. Lord, we have not kept brightly burning the light you entrusted to us. Forgive us for being unprepared. In your mercy, hear us and help us. Lord, we have sometimes ended the day in bitterness or anger. Forgive us for being unrepentant. In your mercy, hear us and help us. Renew our vision. Restore our watchfulness. Make us faithful as you are faithful, that when you come in glory, we may hear you say, Enter into the joy of your Lord. Amen. And so in response to that, we're going to sing a hymn again in which we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and what it cost him that we might be forgiven for our sins. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. But then we look forward to when he shall return in robes of white, the blazing sun shall pierce the light and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Let's sing this together.
well, as we look forward to Jesus' return on that great day, let us declare our faith together. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now we're going to be led in our prayers, and then we're going to have our Bible reading. Let us pray. We know of many people who are carrying heavy burdens through stress, unemployment, illness and loneliness, to name just a few. God of hope, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free, yet so often we choose to bind ourselves and others to a yoke that is not yours. Breathe your spirit into us and give us eyes to see the invisible chains which constrict and constrain your image in us and in others. Give us ears to hear the silent cry of those whose lives languish in the darkness of despair. Give us hearts to feel the pain of lives whose iron bars hide all horizon of hope and healing. In your powerful name, we look forward to the dawning of your kind and compassionate kingdom here on earth. The hope of all who walk with you from the darkness of dependency into the light of your new life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray for family life, and particularly remember where there are relationships that are strained, where there is abuse, where there is sadness. God of compassion, be with those in distress. Give health to the sick, hope to the fearful, and comfort to mourners. Be with our families, friends and neighbours, our country and our world. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence, to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we decorate our, as we decorate our houses and streets for Christmas, be with those for whom Christmas will not be a good time, a time of sorrow through bereavement or illness or loneliness. As we spend time with family, let us not forget them. God our Father, you spoke to the prophets of old of a Saviour who would bring peace. You help them to spread the joyful message of his coming kingdom. Help us as we prepare to celebrate his birth to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. And let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 25. At that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things are being committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, thank you, Francis, for reading that passage. And let's just pray before we look at it. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will give us grace to come like little children in humility before you to learn from your word this day. And we pray that you will indeed reveal to us the Father, uh, that we may know you and love you more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're looking at a very special passage. In recent weeks, we've seen how we can have complete confidence in Jesus Christ in our unsettling and anxious times. We've thought about Jesus' rule. We've thought about his return. We've thought about his word. We've thought about how he's seated at the Father's side, interceding for us, these are all important and vital truths to give us confidence in the Lord Jesus. But this, in this passage today, we find the one place where Jesus pulls back the veil on himself and speaks to us explicitly about his heart, the animating centre of all he is and all he does. I read about a book about this passage earlier in the summer, and I've really looked forward to sharing this message with you. We might expect Jesus, in describing his heart, to say that he's holy and pure, exalted, dignified, generous, joyful, loving. These, of course, are all wonderfully true and amply demonstrated in Jesus' life on earth. But when Jesus himself speaks of his heart, the words he uses are gentle and humble. That is what animates him most deeply, what is most true of our Lord. When he invites us to come to him, that is how he describes his innermost being, what we will find. And the context of this self-revelation is Jesus' invitation to the weary and burdened to come to him and find rest, a deep rest, rest for their souls. And how much we need this today at this time. Yet despite this amazing invitation, there were those in Jesus' day, and many around us today too, who turned down this invitation. And so we see in this passage firstly, that there are none so blind as those that claim to see. Jesus has, throughout the Gospel, have been revealing who he is and what God is like. Um, especially he's been doing so in the towns and villages around the Sea of Galilee, places like Bethsaida, Chorazin and Capernaum especially. Uh, people there have seen his miracles and yet in their own wisdom and learning they, they think they're on the right track in life. And so we read that, that they refuse to repent, they refuse to turn to Jesus in uh, the verse immediately before our passage today, in chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus had said to the residents of Capernaum, who had seen so much of his miracles, it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you, because they simply failed to respond to Jesus in faith. In contrast to this hardness of heart, Jesus begins this passage saying to God his Father, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. By these things, he means what it is to know God and to know God personally and intimately. Now the opinion formers those whose voices the general population paid attention to, who thought they knew best, reject Jesus and so fail to come to know God. In contrast, Jesus delights that those with the humility of little children to come and learn from him came to a true knowledge of God in Jesus Christ. And we too are surrounded by a cacophony of voices telling us how to live our lives on the right track, with our diet and our exercise sorted, our well-being in place, the correct attitudes and ways of speaking that we're told to follow. 
Now, of course, there is some wisdom and learning in what they say. But invariably, there is no knowledge of God. Jesus tells us in verse 27 that knowledge of God is revealed by him because he alone is in that intimate relationship with the Father. So he alone can unveil and reveal what it is to know God truly. Now, this isn't something that can be discovered by um, investigation. It's not something that can be discovered by human wisdom, not even by all manner of spiritual practices. Even such a widely revered person as Mahatma Gandhi, when asked on his deathbed if he had found God, answered, I am still looking. Well, friends, we don't need to be still looking. We need to come like little children, in humility, ready to learn from Jesus. Still looking is what we will all be until we have that humility to come to Jesus as little children. And it is just what he invites us to do as he opens his heart to us. And so what do we find when he does so? Well, we find that there is rest for the weary and the burdened. When we're exhausted by life, weighed down by all the pressures on us, when we admit to being weary and burdened, at that point, the way is open for us to come to Jesus and find rest. And that is a description of so much of what I hear about how people are feeling at the moment, that need to find rest, that sense of exhaustion with this year and having been oppressed and weighed down by the burdens of it. And as one who is gentle and lowly in heart, Jesus is supremely accessible and approachable. We don't need to get our lives sorted and unburdened in order to come to Jesus. His gentle and humble embrace is never outstripped by our sins, our doubts, our anxieties or our failures. And the rest that we find when we come to him is not a place of stupor, like sitting down after a big Sunday roast, but rather the place of rest we find is in taking his yoke. He invites us to take his yoke upon us, uh, upon ourselves. And what does he mean by this? Usually a yoke was thought of as a heavy crossbar laid on the necks of oxen as they ploughed and dragged heavy loads across the fields. But the yoke of Jesus is the response of the liberated, not the heavy duty of the obligated. One author puts it like this, what helium does to a balloon, Jesus' yoke does to his followers. We are buoyed along through the troubles of life by his endless gentleness and supremely accessible humbleness. That is to say, we don't avoid the troubles of life, but in them and through them, we can experience rest for our souls rather than crushing pressure. Now, of course, this has been a tough year for all of us. And despite the beginnings of a vaccination programme, the end, I, I guess, is going to be quite a long way off yet. We have all, all at times been weighed down by the enormity of what seems to be going on, it, not just in our own community, but right across the world. But the heart of Jesus is gentle and humble towards all who are weary and burdened. And he calls us to come to him, to take his yoke and find rest for our souls. Well, how do we come to him? Well, our final hymn says, Just as I am, O Lord of God, I come. Before we sing that, let me just say a prayer for us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you are holy and pure and exalted and generous and loving. We rejoice greatly that these things are also true of you. 
yet we realise that just focusing on those could intimidate us. And so we thank you that when you disclosed your own heart in your own words and invited us to come to you, you told us that you were gentle and humble in heart, infinitely accessible and approachable. And so as this year draws towards a close, uh, we do in humility come before you to take your yoke on us. Lord, please unburden us from our exhaustion and all that oppresses us and help us to take your yoke, your yoke that is light and easy, the gift of one who is gentle and humble in heart. Help us, Lord, to come to you day by day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's sing that wonderful hymn, Just As I Am. O Lord of God, O Lamb of God, I come.
Well, I hope having had uh, a window this morning into the heart of Jesus, you will indeed take up that invitation to come uh, just as you are. Uh, Come to him, knowing that he is gentle and humble in heart. It is a wonderful thing to be reminded of that. I pray the words of that hymn will really stay with you as you go into this week. It's been wonderful to join together uh, to praise God, to learn of him this morning. And um, as we go into this week and look forward to um, Christmas coming shortly, we do invite you to take part in this competition which is going on around the village to prepare a Christmas window focusing on the nativity. Um, You can register with Liz in the um, old school rooms office and there's a wonderful prize of goodies, um, a big hamper of goodies uh, for the window that best expresses uh, that verse from scripture that is uh, mentioned on the fellowship post. Let me conclude our time together this morning with a prayer. Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world and will send him again to be our judge, give us grace so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming that when he comes again we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.